Grace and peace be with you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, and welcome to this online service of worship from Highland Presbyterian Church. We are delighted that you have found your way here, and we invite you to visit our website, highlandpres.org, for resources to share in this service of worship. On our website, you will find an order of worship, links to our online giving portal, our online friendship pad, and our prayer request form. In addition to this online service of worship, we have two worship offerings on Sunday, August the 1st in person. The first of which is at 9.30 a.m. here in the sanctuary. We will be sharing in our worship for the Lord's Day, the same service that you are experiencing here online. Information about that service and links to our registration are found on our website. Additionally, at five o'clock out front in our slate patio, we will have an outdoor worship service and communion at 5 p.m., followed by a time of fellowship at 5.30. We hope that you will learn more about these opportunities and share as you are comfortable. As this is the first day, first Sunday of the month, it is our customs highland to receive our pasta sauce offerings for our crisis control partners and our five cents a meal offering for hunger ministries here in our area. Additionally, we look forward to one of our favorite summer offerings, the Intergenerational Book Club, which will be happening on August 15th. So it is time to get your copy of the book, which is available here in our church office for $5, or you may find a copy at your local library. With gratitude for all of the ways that God is invigorating and sharing in our life of ministry. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for this time of worship. God calls us here to worship in spirit and in truth. God meets us here, welcomed into the revealing light of God's grace, with love just as we are, in spirit, truth, light, and grace. Let us worship God. Let us pray. God of love, we are united as one in Christ Jesus. Through him, you showed us what love looks like and acts like 
through his life and leading, reminding us that we belong to one another as beloved brothers and sisters in Christ. As those who take the name of Christian, we gather to lift our worship and praise, to be nourished and renewed for the ministry ahead that we share together. For it is in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Sisters and brothers, we are called to follow Christ, who calls us to love one another as he has loved us. Let us confess how we have fallen short of that love. First, using the prayer found in our order of worship, followed by a time of silent personal confession. Let us pray. O oh God, sustained by your mercy, we confess our sin. We judge others all too freely. Our hasty words cause conflict and tension. We are disturbers of your peace. As you sent Christ to reconcile your people, forgive the failings of our unredeemed humanity and show us once again the image of your son who loved you and loved his neighbors and taught us to do the same. We make our prayer in Christ's name. Amen. Friends, we seek God's grace with boldness because we trust in Jesus Christ, the one who laid down his life for us. Friends, know this good news to be true. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Good morning, Highland friends, and welcome to this time for young disciples. We have just finished up an amazing week of vacation church school here at Highland. We had lots of wonderful children and an amazing group of volunteers. It was a perfect time for celebrating God's good neighborhood. This was our theme for the week, and I thought I'd give you a few um, opportunities to hear about it from some friends of mine. Enjoy. Love, 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 love. Christians, this is your call to love your neighbor as yourself, for God loves us all. So what happened?
happened in vacation church school this week? Can you tell me? Uh, fun. <laughs> All right, girls. What does it mean to be a good neighbor? Well, so you can be nice and loving, caring. Um, if someone falls down, you can help them back up. Great answer. Robert, tell me something special that you did this week in Bible school. It was probably the neighbor table using the electric sander to sand the wood. Um, I have used one of those before, but I um, haven't used it in a while, so that was pretty exciting using that thing. Um, awesome. What is a neighbor table? A neighbor table is a ordinary table that it looks ordinary, but it's actually um, what some people put out in their front yard and people will come and sit on it with them and have coffee or something. So basically it's like a table for the neighbors. All right, girls, what is God's neighborhood? God's neighborhood is a lot of people that care about each other. That's great. As we come to share our scriptures this day, let us come to God in prayer. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, O God, in the reading of your word that we would hear what you have to say to us this day. May your spirit be poured out upon us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Old Testament reading this day is Psalm 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us and we rejoiced. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the water courses in the Negev, May those who sow in tears reap with shouts of joy. Those who go out weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, carrying their sheaves. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our New Testament lesson comes from the Acts of the Apostles in the 11th chapter, reading verses 19 to 26. Listen now for God's word. Now those who were scattered because of the persecution that took place over Stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, 
and they spoke the word to no one except Jews. But among them were some men of Cyprus and Cyrene who, on coming to Antioch, spoke to the Hellenists also, proclaiming the Lord Jesus. The hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number became believers and turned to the Lord. News of this came to the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. When he came and saw the grace of God, he rejoiced, and he exhorted them all to remain faithful to the Lord with steadfast devotion. For he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and of faith. And a great many people were brought to the Lord. Then Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. So it was that for an entire year they met with the church and taught a great many people. And it was in Antioch that the disciples were first called Christians. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I wonder what happened at Antioch that these followers of Jesus went from being disciples or followers of the way to being called Christians. No longer seen simply as a subgroup within Judaism, these followers of Jesus are now something distinct, different, strange even. From, from what Luke tells us here, something extraordinary was happening in, happening in Antioch. The newfound family of faith there was growing and flourishing. Barnabas is astounded at the way that the grace of God has been at work to draw such a disparate group of people together, Jews and Gentiles or Hellenists alike, women and men and children who are finding new life and common ground in Christ. Barnabas even invites Saul, the former persecutor of the church, to come and teach in this community for a year. Now, it's easy to miss the importance of that, not so much about Saul as, as about the teaching that's happening. I mean, here is a faith so strange, says Will Willeman, a faith so against the grain of our natural inclinations that only by careful instruction and long-term nurture can it be apprehended in the, in the lives of those who would believe. This is a faith that must be taught. This kind of faith, this kind of love, this kind of life together doesn't just come naturally. It takes effort. It must be learned. It takes work to see how God is remaking the world in Christ and how those who would bear his name are called to share in this labor. The great Roman Catholic scholar and author Hans Kung once put it this way, from the first to the last pages of the Bible, it's clear that God's will aims at our well-being on all levels, aims at our definitive and comprehensive good. God's will is a helpful, healing, liberating, saving will. God wills life, joy, freedom, peace, salvation, our final great happiness, both of the individual and for all of us as a whole. This is the meaning of God's victory, the kingdom of God that Jesus proclaims, our total liberation, salvation, satisfaction, bliss. And this very radical definition of God's will and our well-being, which Jesus embodied in his ministry, makes it clear that there is no question of putting a new patch onto old clothing or of pouring young wine into old wineskins. Kung says, here we are actually faced with something new, and it is going to be dangerous to the old. Maybe that's why Luke tells us about the strife and the persecution that happens so much in those early years of the church. This new thing is a threat to what has been before. In the Acts of the Apostles, to be a Christian in this way is to be one who is living into an entirely new reality, a fundamentally different way of seeing the world, of seeing institutions and communities as Christ followers, they view the world through Jesus-colored glasses, 
through lenses of love and grace. It's a new way of seeing themselves and the people around them. As Luke tells it, those who would be called Christians are called to live in a way that's so different from the way that the the others around them are living that they need their own name to describe them. Not long after Luke wrote Luke and Acts, in the second century, a man named Aristides wrote to Emperor Hadrian in defense of these folks who were called Christian. Their behavior was so strange and startling, so different from what was around them that it seems like it nearly takes Aristides' breath away. Writing to Hadrian in the defense of these Christians, he says, They love one another. They never fail to help widows. They save orphans from those who would hurt them. If they have something, they give freely to those who have nothing. If they see strangers, they take them home and are happy as if they were part of the family. They don't consider themselves to be sisters and brothers in the usual sense, but sisters and brothers instead through the Spirit in God. Now, in our day, it's easy for us to lose that sense of how different, how distinct those who were called Christian really were. As Christianity became the faith of the empire around the 5th century, people effectively became Christian at birth as part of their citizenship, not necessarily through any sort of conscious act or decision, but an identity that was bestowed upon them. Nations were Christian whatever that may be taken to mean. That distinct identity that we read about here in Acts and that Aristides describes seems to have lost some of its power along the way. But all of that's changing. For about 50 years now here in America, the church has been out of the center of our national and cultural life no longer having the kind of influence that it once did. Many have lamented that change, even as others are fighting to force the church back into that central place of prominence and influence. There's a struggle at hand about what it means to be Christian and what it means to be the church. There are many churches who believe that their faith should be combined with the power of the state in a way that would push aside any expression of faith that is not their own. I have to say that this does not seem loving in a Jesus-like way to me. There are also expressions of Christian that seem so far removed from the life and the ministry of Jesus of Nazareth that it stretches my mind to the breaking point like the the so-called Church of Glad Tidings that just last weekend, during worship, presented a semi-automatic rifle to former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn, who then joked about finding someone in Washington to use it on. Worship leaders in the congregation laughed in response. I cannot bring myself to hold such an action like that together with the name Christian. I cannot. My friends, claimed by God and empowered by the Spirit as we are, we who are called Christian have an opportunity to share with God in the remaking of this broken world. And if Jesus is the key to understanding who God is and how God works and what God is up to in this world, then love is the only way for us. Maybe our relocation away from the center of our culture actually frees us to be who we really are, a community of faith and love that is shaped by the life and death and resurrection of Jesus. To be called Christian is to know that God is love and that God's love is remaking and renewing this world. Sometimes that love might have to speak a hard word, or it may have to confront those who are in power with a reminder of our common calling to tend to the most vulnerable among us. 
at our best, we who are called Christians have created communities of love, never perfect, but a community of love centered in God's love, embodied in Christ, communities that are reaching out with that love into the world. That's the kind of community I believe we're called to be. And how about you? What does it mean to you to be called Christian? And how will you join this community of faith that we know as church to live into this name that we share? The good news is we bear this name and this identity together. We do this work together. And the living Christ and the power of the Spirit goes with us every step of the way. For this, we give thanks to God. Amen. Our affirmation of faith is the Apostles' Creed. Let us say together what it is that we believe. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray together. Almighty God, you know each of us well. Love us deeply. Your spirit is at constant work in and among us, sustaining and calling us to share in our shared ministry with you. And how grateful we are for the gifts of your abiding spirit and the ways you continue to seek out our concerns and our worries, to give them over to your care. Given so many gifts in our daily lives to enrich us and opportunities for love and companionship, we come now anticipating a deeper appreciation of the wider perspective of your grace and power. Great and loving God, we know we are just tenants of this good earth entrusted through your covenant and grace and love with its care. May we be strengthened in our work of stewardship and creative service. Strengthen our resolve to be worthy of your covenant with us and make us more willing to hear, to obey, and to act in protection of the fruit of your kingdom of love. We lift our prayers for those who lead us and for all who make decisions that impact the well-being of others. For school leaders, community servants, government officials, for all who strive to consider everyday issues and the wider issues of policy and society. Attend to them with your gifts of wisdom that they may soundly and faithfully lead us. God, we praise you for the gifts that you give to those with special gifts those of laughter and healing, teaching and leadership, parenting, these necessities of life. Encourage them to see you as the source of all their gifts and how grateful we are for the light they are among us. Inspire them to continue in their faithful work for the growth of love and cooperation, joy and peace. Startle the wavering and the tempted, the unsure and the procrastinating, with a sharp sense of your interest in your demands of care among them. Refresh the weary and the oppressed and the suffering with a sense of your unlimited and unexpected mercies. We pray for the church, for all who respond to the name of Christian, Stir within us a passion for the gospel and the building of your kingdom among us here and now. Embolden our voices to proclaim your love to the lost and the least. 
We ask your prayers and your abiding grace to rest upon all of those in our Highland family whom are facing surgeries and recoveries, diagnosis and uncertainties. And we pray for those that are seeking to provide care for them. Sustain them with your presence, your unwavering care and love for them, that the love of this congregation may be known. Be with us in these days as we continue to gather safely to worship and pray and to fellowship and serve together. We thank you for the gift of our Vacation Church School this week, for the joy of young people and for the faithfulness and energy of their leaders. We ask your blessing with our middle schoolers this week as they go out to serve. For all of the ways that you are moving among us, we give you thanks and praise. Thank you for the ways that your son, our Lord, taught us to serve and to love. And hear now the prayers of our hearts as we join our voices together to pray the prayer that he taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Sisters and brothers, offering what we have for sake of others is a means of extending the gospel witness into our community and world. We can be generous in our giving without fear because God provides for us in abundance. Our gifts can be given online or at the church office through the mail or in person. We are so very thankful for every way that you are able to share for the ways that our sharing together makes such abundant ministry possible. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks that you have shown us the meaning of love through Jesus Christ who gave his life for us. Show us how to share Christ's love by giving our lives for one another to the glory of your holy name. Amen.
Sisters and brothers, let us go forth as followers of Jesus with his love shaping our love in all that we say and do. And as we go forth, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with us this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen.